Welcome to Christ Supreme Ministry, the House of Restoration. We invite you to listen to this spirit-filled message from our pastor, Henry Fakwade. Remain blessed as you listen to the word of life. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to all our friends and family of Christ Supreme Ministry. You are all welcome back to another Tuesday Bible study. Let us gather around our friends, our family. Let us let them know that it's time for another Tuesday Bible study. And I pray that as we gather, we will not gather in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all rise up and let us just render a word of prayer to God. Let us thank him for the grace to see another Tuesday Bible study. We are now in the last week of February, just like that. So Lord, let's, let's just thank him. Lord, we give you all the glory and we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for none of us are missing. Thank you, Lord, for none of us are sick. Thank you, Lord, for none of us are dead. Thank you, Lord, for your protection over our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that has sustained us up to this moment and that we know that your grace will sustain us through this whole year and beyond in Jesus' name. Lord, even as we are here, we pray that your word will come and minister to us today in the name of Jesus, that we will not just be here, we will not just gather here in vain in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us commit the minister of God that will be teaching us today into God's hands. Let us pray that God will speak through him today. In the name of Jesus, that the word that will be coming out from him, will be the words from above in the name of Jesus. Let us pray that he will not just speak of himself, but the Lord that the, but the Lord will minister through him in the name of Jesus. Let us cover him with the blood of Jesus, even all that he'll be teaching us today. Let us pray that it will minister to us and it will impact us positively. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we commit your servant into your hands, even as he'll be teaching us this evening. Let us pray that the word will come unto us and will accept it in the name of Jesus that the word will come and it will plant into a fertile ground in the name of Jesus, that we will not just be hearers of the word, but we'll also be doers of the word in the name of Jesus. Let us cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus, even as we are all here. Let us pray that the blood of Jesus will protect us wherever we are in our various homes, at work, wherever you are. Let us just plead the blood of Jesus over our surroundings, even over the network that we are using. Let us pray that the blood of Jesus will cover it in the name of Jesus, that even as we are here, everything will go smoothly in the name of Jesus, and that God's name alone will be glorified in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, let's just thank God for giving us the grace to see this last Tuesday in the month of February. Let us thank him for protecting us, for keeping us and for giving us the grace to see another Tuesday Bible study. Let us thank him for not forsaking us, and not leaving us alone. Let us thank him for his mercy over our lives. So we give you all the glory and we thank you, Lord Jesus, even as we are here and we are able to see this last Tuesday in the month of February. We pray that we'll see all the other Tuesdays in the rest of this year and beyond in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cover this service with the blood of Jesus. From this moment, Lord Jesus, take charge, take charge and take total control over this meeting in the name of Jesus and let your name alone be glorified. Even as we lift up your name in worship, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will take charge and you will accept our worship in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, we worship you. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. warrior great in battle Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Mighty warrior, 
great in battle. Jehovah is your name. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. He is awesome. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise, to you our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place, Mighty God. You are God, Elohim, ancient of days, rain, rain. There is none like you, Lord, ancient of days. Rain, rain, you are God, you are God, Elohim, ancient of days, rain, rain, there is none like you, Lord. Ancient of days, rain, rain. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Never 
change. You are lifted. You are lifted above other gods. Above other gods. Above other gods. You are lifted above other gods. Above other gods. Above other gods. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Shall we bow our heads for prayer, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We give glory unto you. Thank you, Father, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to come at your feet, Lord, to come and study your word. Holy Spirit, Divine Father, I have no understanding of my own. And your people also are looking up unto you, Lord, to enrich their understanding and knowledge. Speak to us this evening, Father, Lord, from your word. Let the entrance of your word, Father, Lord, let it bring light and understanding unto the simple in the name of Jesus. Every form of distraction from the pit of hell, Lord, we bind them right now in the name of Jesus. As your word we go out, Father, this evening, let it go out with power, authority, and blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I welcome us tonight in the name of Jesus to another Tuesday Bible studies. Uh, we want to thank the Lord for what the Lord has been doing since we started this series uh, four weeks ago. Today is part four. And uh, what we are looking into is very important. So if you are joining us for the first time, we have been studying the series about the principles and prerequisites for attaining real spiritual growth. The principles and prerequisites for attaining real spiritual growth. That is, how to achieve real spiritual growth. This is part four. So, if you are joining us for the first time, or if you have missed any of the previous uh, series, please go back to the YouTube, go search for it, part one, part two, part three, so that you won't miss anything. Uh, the Lord will help us this evening in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, please uh, turn your Bible with me this evening to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we'll be reading from verse 13 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 13, from verse 13 to 27. I read, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many thereby which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few thereby that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or fig of chisels? Even so, every good tree, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse 19. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, everyone, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, 
Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in the name? And in the name have cast out devils, and in the name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these saints of mine, and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth this saint of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fled, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts, in the name of Jesus. Uh, this is fairly a uh, popular passage of the Bible, that an average Pentecostal, an average believer, that have been in faith for some years, we would have come across this passage. But where we are going this evening is to examine some salient points in this chapter that we have read and how relevant is it to the theme of our study? How relevant is this passage to achieving spiritual growth? Let's go into it. Right there from verse 13 that we have read, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke to them, said, Enter ye in, at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. In verse 14, he said, But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few thereby find it. In verse 13 and 14, our Lord Jesus Christ compared, was making two uh, illustrations the wide road the narrow road, the wide way, and the narrow one. And in verse 13, our Lord Jesus Christ made it very clear that many people will go onto the left hand, which is the wide way. Why? Because it's so wide. It accommodates all sorts of behaviors. It accommodates anything that caters to the flesh. It accommodates Anything that feeds our, our people's carnal mindedness. But many people will go there. But in verse 14, because the road is narrow, it's restricted. It comes with certain expectations, rules, and some uh, 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 commandments. Very few people will go into it. Beloved, from these two verses, it is very important that it is one thing to be born again. It is another thing for you to remain in faith. So for you to be able to enter into the straight gate, the narrow way that leadeth unto, unto life, you must be saved. But in addition to that, it requires discipline, spiritual discipline and commitment to be born again, remain focused, remain on that narrow way. And this spiritual discipline that can keep you and I in this narrow path, we only come through spiritual growth. And we can see how important it is for an average believer to grow spiritually. If you don't grow, if you are not growing, if you are not matured, spiritually, you will not be able to stay within the narrow way. Why? Because there are so many distractions, attraction in the, in the wide way. That's why many people will go there. There are so many glamour there. There are so many things that attracts people 
what we call enjoyment. So it takes the salvation and spiritual discipline, which we only come through spiritual growth for anyone to remain committed, focused, and stay in the narrow way. Praise the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ went further right away. But look at verse 15 of Matthew chapter 7. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave a warning. Beware. Pay attention. Beware of false prophets which come to you in the sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are revenue wolves. Beware. Beware. Danger is around of false prophets. They come in the clothing of sheep, but inwardly they are revenue wolves. I mean, the revenue wolves goes after the sheep to prey on them. The revenue wolves, there are so many. If, as at that time, this is over 2,000 years ago, that our Lord Jesus Christ had given this kind of warning that false prophets will come. He has seen some. There are some that existed in his own days. But now, you know more than I do. Everywhere is filled with false prophets and teachers. So, apart from the fact now listen to these people of God. Apart from the fact that false prophets will extort you, will take advantage of you, will manipulate you, apart from that, the greatest danger of false prophets and teachers and prophetesses and pastors, the greatest danger is that they will lure people away from the right path. They will lure them away. They will derail them. They won't allow them to be able to locate this narrow way. They will not. That is the greatest danger. They can take your money. They can abuse you, which is not okay. But the greatest danger is that the first prophet is recruiting members, recruiting people that is going to take to hell fire with himself. So this is the danger this generation is facing. There's only one way after your salvation. There's only one way to escape from this end time false prophet deception. That only one way comes through spiritual growth, comes through spiritual maturity. If you are still like a babe, the danger and the deception that comes with various sizes, color of deception. You, 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 if you are not grown spiritually, you won't be able to discern because it will look like original. There are so many angels of darkness. The Bible says they, are, they, are, they, are, they present themselves as angels of light. There are so many men of God. When they speak, you think angels are speaking. When they speak in tongue, you think it's lightning that is happening. When they dress up to come and teach or do their uh, uh, crusade, oh, you would think uh, uh, God has come down. The way they dress, the kind of crowd they use to support themselves, and the crowd that you will see that are following them will mislead you if there is no taking. It is only through the Discernment, the discernment of the spirit, which also comes as spiritual growth, that you can identify then. So our Lord Jesus Christ went forward in verse 16. He said, Ye shall know them by their fruits. That shows that all these false prophets and false preachers, they produce fruits. But the fruits you cannot see them with your naked eyes. You cannot. Because they are so perfect. They are skillful in their manipulation. They are professional. They are like their father, which is devil their father, that trained them and prepared them for end time like this. You can only recognize their schemes, their devices, their manipulation, only if you are growing spiritually. Why am I saying this? 
the Spirit of God. The Bible says, if the Spirit of God that raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, if that Spirit is in you, that Spirit will quicken your mortal body. If the Holy Spirit will not allow you to be comfortable. So, some years ago, uh, almost over 10 years ago, my, my wife and I, we went for a program somewhere. We were invited. Uh, we've not started a Christ Supreme Day. We were invited. In fact, it was a baby naming or dedication at a particular location. So we went there. Just one visit. We went there. And within 15 minutes, the Holy Spirit did not make me comfortable. That what are you doing here? I am not here. What is happening here is not of me. And I whispered to my wife, do you feel what I'm feeling? She said, yes, I'm feeling the same thing. I said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We just find a way to say hello to the person that invited us so that we can register our presence. And there we're gone. But before we left, some shows happened. But before the show happened, Holy Spirit had quickened me that this is not the right place. So if you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit is your spiritual GPS. He will be directing you. He will give you nudging. He won't give you peace. So by their fruits, you will know them. The fruits might not be visible to your physical eyes. It takes spiritual uh, designing of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's, let's move forward because of our time tonight. So, our Lord Jesus Christ also make a comparison. Can a good tree bring bad fruit? Or can a bad tree bring good fruit? You will see that in verse 17 to 18. So, our Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the vine, we are the branches. If you are connected to the right vine, our Lord Jesus Christ is the vine. Every believer, we are a branch in him, attached to him. If we are attached to our Lord Jesus Christ, the fruits that will be coming through us will definitely show what type of tree that we are attached to. So, a bad tree will produce bad fruit. So, this is what we are facing in this uh, generation. Praise the Lord. But one thing is certain in verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying is this. All those false prophets and teachers that have come to derail, to deceive people at the day, at the time of judgment, they will be met with appropriate God, uh, judgment of God. If they do not change, and amend their ways. But my danger, but, but my concern is this, my fear is this, that a lot of innocent believers will have been derailed. And if they died in their deception, there's no excuse when we get to heaven. Oh, you can't get to heaven and say, God, you see, it was that false prophet that didn't teach me. The no, 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 no. False prophets are not interested in your spiritual well-being. False prophets are not concerned in your spiritual growth. They are not concerned about your spiritual maturity. They are not concerned about living a holy life, a righteous life. False prophets are not concerned. If you don't read your Bible in 10 years, they are very happy with you. So they are not concerned about your spiritual well-being. But all this can only be appreciated and be identified if you are growing as a believer. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Look at verse, let's go to verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that dwelt the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That verse 21 is loaded. Number one thing that verse 21 is telling us is this. That those people that are saying, Lord, Lord, it tells me that they are people that 
were in the church environment when they were on earth. Because Jesus Christ here in verse 21 is talking about the day of judgment. When we all go to Christ, on that day of judgment, some are going to say, Lord Jesus, Lord, can't you remember me? I did miracle in your name. Oh, I did deliverance for people. And Lord Jesus Christ said, not everyone that said, Lord, Lord. Not all of them will enter the kingdom of God. So the number one information that you must bear in mind, that this one consists, those people that are saying, Lord, Lord, consists of people that were in church, supposedly born again. But at the end of the day, they did not make it to heaven. Maybe they were deceived. Maybe they were derailed. Maybe they were discouraged. Maybe because they were not growing and they fell away. There could be so many reasons why these people will not make it. But one thing is very certain. The Lord Jesus Christ said, not everyone that calls my name here on earth. This is talking about believers, not unbelievers. The people that are not saved, they know where they will end up. There's no controversy. There's no discussion about that. No argument about that. If anyone is not born again and the person should die in their sin, it's case closed. It's hellfire. But this verse is talking about people that were in church. The Lord said, those that will eventually make it to the kingdom of heaven, they are the doers of the will of God. The doers of the will of God. And who are the doers? Those that are saved, those that grow spiritually, those that are spiritually disciplined and committed. If you are not growing, you cannot be spiritually disciplined. Why? Because you will still remain as a babe. You won't grow. You will still be crying for milk instead of looking for solid food as we studied last, uh, last Tuesday. So those that will make it to the kingdom of God, they are the ones that are growing, saved, growing spiritually, committed, matured in spiritual things. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Many will say in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in that name? And have we not cast out devil in verse 22 in that name? And when and then will I prophesy unto them? I knew you not. Depart from me, you that walk in iniquity. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. From verse 24 to 27, our Lord Jesus Christ made also another comparison. Those that hear his word can be likened to a man or two men that built their house. One built on a solid foundation and another built on the soil. So when the rain came on the two houses, the one that was built on the soil could not withstand the torrential rain, could not withstand the storm, could not withstand the flood. The one that was built on the soil crumbled. And the Bible says, great was the fall of that building. But the one that was built on the solid rock, the rain came. The storm came, the flood came, the building stood, was able to withstand the forces, the flood that came. Why? Because it was built on a solid rock. Beloved, this analysis capped it all. If you are not growing, you are building on a soil. You will remain like a babe. You will be tossed around by the winds of doctrines and the sledge of deception of men, of men of God. If you are not growing, you will remain a babe. And as long as you remain a babe spiritually, God cannot commit things that has values, that have significant values, either spiritually or in the secular world. Like I said last Tuesday, God cannot commit spiritual witty things 
unto the hands of believers that are not growing. God cannot do rapid promotion into somebody that is not growing. Where God wants an agenda, where God wants to do something, God cannot take you there because if you are not growing spiritually, you won't be able to deliver the agenda of God at that particular place. It is a serious matter, people of God, not to grow spiritually. That is why the Lord has given me this warning to take my time to explain, to teach the principles and prerequisites of attaining real spiritual growth. Today, by the grace of God, I hope time will permit me. We are going to look into three of the prerequisites. It's very important. These three we are going to look into today. If you miss any one of these three prerequisites, your spiritual growth will be doubtful. In fact, you cannot grow. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord somebody. Now, let's move forward. Principles and prerequisites for spiritual growth. The first one we are going to look at. The first principle. This is the very first one. You cannot miss this. If you miss this, you cannot grow. And I will show you why it is important. And the first prophet don't talk about this. And if they talk about it, they, they, they just scratch it on the head. The first principle of spiritual growth is spiritual birth. Salvation. You have to be genuinely born again. This is number one principle. Hello, somebody? Principle number one. I'm going to be asking us. Principle number one. For you to grow spiritually, you must be born again. Not attending church. No. Not having a Christian name. No. Not that I'm a deacon or deaconess. No. Not that my father is a pastor. No. Not that I attended Bible college. No. Not that I'm a good man. No. You must be born again. If you are not saved, you cannot grow. This is the first prerequisite. That is, you must accept our Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and remain committed to him. This, there must be a time in our lives when we verbally accept the gift of eternal life. There must be a time. So my question is this to the listeners. Can you remember when you actually verbalize it? Because the Bible says, confession is made unto salvation from our mouth and we believe in our heart. There must be a time that you consciously say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. There must be a time. If there's no time like that, don't think that because you are always in the church, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that doesn't make you born again. Because you are named uh, James, John, Peter, uh, Jacob. Uh, it, it has nothing to do. There must be a time that you confess him and you accept him. If there's no time like that, you better do it now. You better do it now. Tomorrow might be too late. Praise the Lord, somebody. You have to verbalize it. It has to happen. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10. Romans chapter 10. From verse 9 to 10. Romans chapter 10. From verse 9 to 10. I read. That if thou shalt confess. With thy mouth. The Lord Jesus. And shalt believe. In thy heart. That God raised him. From the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart. Man believed unto righteousness. And with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Praise the Lord. So these two actions must happen simultaneously. You confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he died for your sin. And you must also believe in your heart 
that you have been accepted and forgiven and that your name is written in the book of life. This must happen. This must happen. And as we said last Tuesday, the moment you confess your sin and you accept the gift of eternal life, there is an instantaneous sanctification. Instantaneous sanctification. Whereby through the blood of Jesus, you are pardoned. You are washed clean. You are put. There is a positional change. Instantaneous sanctification involves a positional change in your relationship with God. You that were in darkness before, you are moved onto light. You that were eliminated from the kingdom of God, you are now being accepted. You that has nothing to do, you that were enemy of God before your salvation, now you have become a child, a son of God, a member, a member of the family of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. First Corinthians, we have a couple of uh, Bible passages that we must look at to back up this so that it's not Pastor Henry's word, but these are the word of God. We are still looking at the first prerequisite, which is important. First Corinthians chapter 15, 21 to 22. First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 21 to 22. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all. Even though in Christ shall all be made alive. Praise the Lord. So what we are saying is this. Everybody including me, before I was saved, my academic nature made me to be separated from God. So anytime you talk about the first Adam, which was Adam in the flesh. Adam, we are or anybody that operates in the flesh. We are dead spiritually. So there is a need because the Bible says, for all apps, all we have all sinned and come and fall short of the glory of God. So if you are your natural man, you are still operating in this Adamic nature, you are dead spiritually. But our Lord Jesus Christ came for this purpose to give us life so that you can have eternal life. So in Christ Jesus, we that were dead in our sin, we that were dead and condemned if we die in our sin, we are now risen with our Lord Jesus Christ unto life. We are risen with him unto life. So this, I mean, requires us that in order for us to move from the state of spiritual death unto life, to eternal life, there is need for salvation. There is no other means for a man to be saved except in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very important. Salvation. You must be born again and make sure that you remain disciplined to continue to walk in that way. Praise the Lord. Let me read from my note here. I said, being born again is a spiritual experience. And the growth that we are talking about is also spiritual growth. So when you become born again, when you are saved, there is a spiritual transaction. There is a spiritual encounter that happens. If your salvation is genuine, it happens inside. It's quick. So that spiritual conversion or salvation that happens to you is the only way that will lead you to spiritual growth. You cannot be carnal and say you want to grow spiritually. It, it doesn't go that way. And you cannot be a, you cannot say you are growing spiritually and be operating in carnal mindedness. The two are mutually exclusive. You can't put them together. So this shows that it is necessary that we need salvation in our life. Praise the Lord, somebody. Ezekiel chapter 11. We are still talking about the need for salvation. Ezekiel chapter 11, 17 to 20. 
Ezekiel 11, 17 to 20. Are we all there? Ezekiel chapter 11, 17 to 20. Ezekiel chapter 11, 17 to 20. Hallelujah. I read. Therefore say thus, said the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. Verse 18. We are reading to 20. And they shall come thither. They shall take away all the detestable things. Therefore, and all the abomination they are off from them. And I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. And we give them a heart of flesh. Verse 20. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Praise the Lord. This, we're talking in terms of the context of this passage, the Lord said, Prophet Ezekiel to the Israelites. And the Lord said, I will bring them back. But the Lord said, I will give them one flesh. I will give them one flesh. And I will give them a new spirit. It's very important. In verse 19, I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within you. You can see. So at salvation, when you are born again, your age, your name, your complexion, nothing about you has changed. But what changed inside of you is your heart. The moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, if your salvation is real, God has done a spiritual transaction. He gives you a new heart and he puts his spirit in it. And from that day, your heart will begin to drift towards the things of God. What you used to like in the world, the sin and all sorts of evil that you used to do in the world, your, your, your heart will begin to repel them. They will be repulsive unto you. You will hate them. They won't give you joy anymore. God said, I will give you a new heart and I will put my new spirit in it. But look at the secret, why it is important to be saved, and why your salvation is important to your growth. Look at verse 20. That they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Verse 20 saying, the only way you can walk in the statutes, in the commandment, in the law, in the love of God. It's only when you have a new heart and a new spirit. And when you are hearing about new heart and new spirit, he's talking about salvation. So if you are not saved, you don't carry a new heart. You don't carry the new spirit of God. You cannot do the will of God. So in New Testament, in Matthew chapter 7 that we read, that our Lord Jesus Christ, those that will come to the kingdom of God, they are the ones that will do the will of my Father. So, Prophet Ezekiel, thousands of years before our Lord Jesus Christ did this, he now confirmed what our Lord Jesus Christ, or our Lord Jesus Christ confirmed what Prophet Ezekiel said. Prophet Ezekiel told the Israelites, except you have a new heart, Filled with the new, a new spirit of God, you cannot keep the commandment of God. So that is why anyone who is going to grow and remain within this narrow gate, salvation is important. That is the only way you can walk in the statutes of God. That is the only way you can be the doer of the world. A lot of people want to do the will of God. Of a truth, they are in the church, every, every program in various churches. But they can't do it. Paul the Apostle, he cried in Romans chapter 7. He said, yes, 
I want to do the good thing. But how to find it? I don't have it. Things that I'm supposed to do, those are the things that I'm not doing. Things that I'm not supposed to do, those are the things that I do. So if I find myself doing that, he said, it is no more me that is doing it. But it shows that sin has found itself unto him. Salvation is very key. It's very important. You cannot do the will of God. You cannot grow. You cannot keep the status of God except you are genuinely saved. Genuine salvation gives you a new heart, gives you the spirit of God. That new spirit is the spirit of God. The spirit of God in you will connect you to the spirit of God and you'll be able to grow. It is the Holy Spirit and it will begin to feed you. You begin to feed you. If you don't have that new spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot feed, feed the flesh. The new spirit only go to those that are genuinely saved. Now, let me ask the reader to help us to read. Ezekiel chapter 36 from 25 to 29. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. Can, can you read louder, please? Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for you the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for helping us to read. You can see the same message here. The same message that God sent also in Ezekiel chapter 36. The Lord said, I will clean you. I will give you a new spirit. I will fill it. And then you'll be able to do my will. I said, I will deliver. The Lord said, I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. The uncleanness. The uncleanness that the Lord is talking about here. They are our filthy, they are our filthy rags. Our, our sin. We cannot come off them. Um, of those, we can't come off those bad behaviors or sinful lifestyle except we have the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God is in us, then we'll be able to do the will of God. Praise the Lord. Let's take another Bible passage. Romans chapter 8. All these are supporting the same fact, the need for salvation. Romans chapter 8 from verse 6 to 8. Romans 8 from 6 to 8. Romans 8 from 6 to 8. I read, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Praise the Lord. Look at that verse 7. To be carnally minded is enmity. Anyone that is not saved, you put yourself in a, in a very tough position. If you are not saved, you, are the, you, you become an enemy of God. Why? Because you cannot do the will of God. To be carnally minded is death. Before our salvation, we are all dead spiritually. We don't have life. So it's only at salvation that we have life. When we are saved, when we are genuinely saved, that's when we have life. And the life we are talking about is spiritual life that we are talking about. And the Bible says here, those that are in the flesh, when you are not saved, you are in the flesh. You will be kind of minded. All those things that will be attracting your attention, they are the things of the flesh. So, it is very important for us to be saved. And finally, the last passage for this point, John chapter 3. 
John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. I'm going to ask our reader to help us again. John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. Go ahead. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Praise the Lord. Thank you again. John chapter 3, look at that verse 6. I'm starting from verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. We are all born of the flesh, the Adamic nature. Without salvation, we will remain carnal. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's so straightforward. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we have to be born of the water, born of the spirit. So that we can be able to do the will of God. In the passage that we have read, now we saw this in the Old Testament. Through prophet Ezekiel confirmed it that God said, yes, you need to have a new heart and a new spirit. And here our Lord Jesus Christ confirming to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was also in the temple, which we'll say in our own dispensation now, we can say, yes, he was a member of a church. Nicodemus was a leader in the, in the temple, and yet he didn't understand the concept of being saved. And this is our Lord, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ in verse 3. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said, verily, verily, it is important, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Salvation. There's no other two way to this. You must be saved. You must be born again. And if you are born again, that is the pathway to spiritual growth. A lot of churchgoers are not saved. A lot of churchgoers are not saved. They just go to church. They just go to church. That's why there's no there's no remorse when they do anything bad. That's why many people still go to church and they still drink sin as if they are drinking water. That's why they do all sorts of things. Because there's no spirit of God that will quicken them. There's no new heart that will prick them that this thing you are doing, you shouldn't do it. The spirit of God can only quicken those that are saved, that are filled with the spirit of God. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, let me wrap up this point number one about salvation. Please take this note. Write it down. These three things I'm about to tell you. If you skip this first principle and prerequisite for spiritual growth, if you skip the first one, the consequence, we have three consequences. Number one, if you skip, if you are not born again, if you are just a church goer, or if you are backslidden and you have not found yourself back into Christ, these three things you will experience then. Number one, number one, your work with God will be full of struggles and hypocrisy. You will struggle if no matter how long you stay in the church, you can appear to be okay outside, but inside you will struggle. That's why you see believers rising and falling from same sin, from one sin to another, rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling. Oh Lord, I will not do this. The same prayer they pray in January, they will pray it in February. Lord, I won't do this again. They will commit the same thing in March again. Their life 
will be full of struggles, spiritual struggles. Yes, there could be leaders in the church. It doesn't matter. There could be pastors. There could be general overseer. There could be evangelists. It doesn't matter. If you are not saved, your life will be full of hypocrisy. Your life will be full of spiritual struggles. You want to show people that you are there. Your Bible could be this big. You could have pendant, cross in your neck. You could have stickers in your car. Jesus said, covered by the blood of Jesus. Blood. It doesn't matter. You will struggle. That's number one thing that is going to happen. Number two, if you skip the first principle, number two, you cannot attain real spiritual growth. You cannot. You cannot grow. Because the new heart that will serve as the, as, the, as the ground for the word of God to grow. You don't have it. The spirit of God that would always draw you to spirit, to, to God, is absent in you. So you are just a church goer. You are just prophesying. That is why you see counterfeit tongues. When people are praying in tongues, it's counterfeit. They want to show. They want to show that they are born again. That's why you see them doing, hey, hey, Toyota, Honda, Toyota, Honda, Mercedes. They say they are speaking in tongues. It is counterfeit. But it takes the Spirit of God inside a man of God to just be looking at this and saying, this is counterfeit. They want to show. Yes, they can be water baptized. It doesn't matter. They can be the one that pray loudest. That is why I said in the beginning that being able to pray Fire prayer is not an indication of spiritual growth. Because you find out in some churches, the spirit of hypocrisy, when people pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, watch them very well. Watch them very well. If they are not saved, they want to use their prayer to cajole you that they are in the spirit. So it is not how loud, it is not how loud you can pray that determines that you are a child of God. I believe, yes, in aggressive prayer. I believe in apostolic prayer. I prayed like that myself. But what I'm saying is this. A lot of you that are not saved are also praying like that. So don't be carried away. So, number three thing that will happen to the person, which I don't pray for anybody, is that if you are not saved, you are not a candidate for heaven. No. No. No matter how long you are staying in the church, no matter the amount of anointing oil the man of God pour on your head, no matter how many hands they lay on your hand, laying of hand or anointing oil or prophecy will not take you to heaven. I can guarantee you of that. It will not take you to heaven. These three things are very important. That if you skip salvation, you cannot grow. You will struggle. And that person is not a candidate of kingdom of God or heaven. So at this point, if you are listening to me, wherever you are, I come to you with the good news that you should give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the starting point. This is how I started my journey. I was a church goer for years. And as soon as I leave the church, I'll go and go back to who I am until the Lord encountered me. Until the Lord met with me in the corner of my room, that was the turning point. You need that experience tonight, wherever you are. If you want to give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, please rise up wherever you are. I want you to lay your hands on your chest and invite our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And I acknowledge that you are my God, that you died for my sin. Lord Jesus, I invite you, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Write my book in the book of write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace not to look back into the world. Thank you, Holy Spirit Divine. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This is the first principle. The first principle and prerequisite of spiritual growth. 
This is the first one. Let's go to the second one. Hallelujah. After you have been saved now, this is the second principle. For anyone that wants to grow spiritually, this is the second principle. Commitment to study and meditate on the Word of God. Commitment to study and meditate on the Word of God. I'm going to say it again. Commitment to study and meditate on the Word of God. Why is this important? This is the second uh, prerequisite for anybody that wants to go. Remember where we are coming from. When you are saved, you have a new heart, you have a new spirit. You are just saved, you are like a baby. You need something to feed on. That thing that will give you the spiritual growth, that thing that will ensure that you are growing, is the word of God. This is the second stage of spiritual growth. If you don't create time to study the word, you will not feed your spirit man. That's apart from you are looking at me physically. This is Pastor Henry physically, but my real person is inside. My real person is inside of me. That my real person, my new regenerated Henry Fakwade, when I met the Lord, has to be fed. It doesn't take natural food. It takes spiritual food. And that spiritual food is the word of God. Is the word of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. That is the only way. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Spiritual growth comes by reading the word of the Lord. Faith coming by hearing is not that, oh, I go to church, I hear the pastor read the Bible. No! The one that the pastor does in the church is corporate. Yes, it will feed you a little bit. It will feed you. It will feed you. But you need to prepare your own delicacy because there's no way any man of God will be able to preach in one service, in one Sunday, or Bible studies. There's no way one teaching like this will be able to cater for all that you need at once. The pastor just come, deliver his message, maybe 45 minutes, maybe one hour, and it's gone. And if you're at this part of the world, there are some people that walk every other Sunday. So if you're in the church today, you are not in the church next Sunday. So in a month, you only come for message. And if you rely on that alone, it, your spiritual man will suffer hunger. Your spiritual man will not grow. So the word of God is the main and essential spiritual multivitamin needed for your spiritual growth. Amen, somebody. Your, the word of God is a spiritual multivitamin that we all need to grow. If you don't have that word of God in you, you cannot grow. Our memory verse, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. What does it say? Let's go there, please. Put it on the board. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. What does it say? As a new babe, as a newborn babe, as a new believer, as a new born, born again, desire the sincere meek of the world that you may grow thereby. You have to desire it as a new born babe. Yes, thank God, yes, I've been saved decades ago. 
But I'm still like I'm still like a babe. So I need that word. When I say I'm still like a babe, that doesn't mean that I'm not growing. But I'm saying that I need the word. Just as the milk is to the baby, so is the word of God to a serious believer. As milk is to the baby, so is the word of God to a believer that is heaven focused. If you are not heaven focused, then the word of God will not make anything to you. You need that word of God. Let me say this. The word of God, the Bible, is the starting point after your salvation. But this generation is confused. A lot of Christians, they are confused. Why? Of a truth. They are born again. But the man of God, the church that they are going, they don't create an avenue to teach them the word of God, the word of life. They will make them to grow. Rather, it's miracles, prophecy. Uh, Some times ago, a, a brother came to my place to show me what a man of God was doing. I, 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 I couldn't believe when he was telling me. And I said, show me. And he went to the, he went online, like maybe YouTube or whatever. He went to go and pull the video, says, look at it. This man of God had a crusade in the stadium. The stadium was full. There was overflow. I mean, by my own estimation, people in that stadium cannot be less than 40,000. 40,000 people. And apart from that, this man of God was ushered in by bodyguards, military people, commissioners, ministers in that country. They ushered him in. Throughout the program, <laughs> from what I saw, this man of God did not open the Bible. He did not. And people were ailing him. What was he doing? Professor. He was prophesying, oh yes, there's, there's a Rosaline somewhere wearing red. Oh yes, you wear black shoe, blah, 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 blah. That was what he was doing. And people were clapping. They were jubilating. Say, so you want me to prophesy? If you want to be a millionaire, come this way. Hey, that was what the man of God was doing. I said, Father Lord. A lot of innocent believers, they are in the wrong crowd. So therefore, if you are listening to me, if you are a member of Christ's supreme ministry, and you know people that do know that they are not being fed well where they are, and you kept quiet, my question is, do you really love them? You should bring them to where they will hear the word of God. And if you are a believer, wherever you are, you are hearing me. If you are in a good church where they are being when you are being taught the living word of God and you know people that are perishing and you cannot bring them into the hands of God where they'll be taught, you will answer some questions when we go before the Lord. The man was prophesying and they were clapping. They were jubilating. I told us in our last studies that spiritism has been brought into the house of God. Spiritism is when they are using all sorts of demonic means. When they are using Yes, sorcery, divination, witchcraft, to do all sorts of things. Jesus Christ, in the passage that we read in Matthew chapter 7, he did say you will know them by their miracles. He said by their fruits. How can a whole church gather for hours without opening the Bible? And the man of God is prophesying, oh, your husband is bringing 20,000. Oh, you have a business. Oh, your Boyfriend, all sorts of nonsense that shouldn't be brought to the altar of God. Word of God. Commitment. You must remain steadfast, committed to the word of God. It is the word of God that grows believer. I cannot overemphasize this. It is the word of God that grows believer spiritually. No amount of prayer I as a pastor can pray for you that will make you to grow. If you don't put your own personal impute, 
The personal input is from you sitting down and read a little bit here today, a little bit there tomorrow. Precept upon precept, line upon line. You must be reading. Open your ears, come to church, come to service, come to Bible studies. Take notes. That's why in Christ Supreme Ministry, all our members will give you notes. So take note and write it down and go back home and reflect and meditate on it and be like the Berean Christians. Because the Bible said the, the Berean Christians, they were more noble in the sense that when they got home, everything Paul the Apostle taught them. They went into their Bible to confirm that, oh, so this is true. Pouring anointing oil on believers said they don't grow them. I've never seen anyone and there will never be anyone that will just grow spiritually by just pouring anointing oil on them. It is the word of God that grows believer. Not any other thing. Word of God, salvation, word of God, and all other things that we are going to learn will help you to grow. And as like we said last Tuesday, there are some that are focusing more on necessary elements of spiritual growth. Necessary, but they are not sufficient. If you focus more on that, you are not going to grow. Your growth will be stunted. You must focus on these crucial ones that I'm talking about. Salvation, commitment to study and meditate on the word of God. Let me quickly add this. Let me quickly add this, beloved. As a young convert, convert as a young believer, the starting point is the word, not Christian literatures. I do have books. I do have Christian literature, but if you are still new and young in faith, if you have less than three years, please, I beg you, focus primarily on the world. Focus primarily on the world. Focus primarily on the world. If you don't focus on the world, you are buying books by authors. There are so many hungry authors out there writing books in the name of being Christian feeding people with wrong information. I came across one of such books. When I thank God that I have grown, that I have matured in those days. And what I saw the man of God wrote in that book, I threw the book away. I threw it away. Completely. Because the man of God was teaching something that is wrong. That I, I, don't, I don't want to mention it here. Oh, instead of you committing uh, uh, fornication, you can be doing this. Written in a book. A lot of believers will read that. Young believers, they will follow it and it will lead them to hell. So if you are new in the faith, a young believer, or if you know that you are still struggling with spiritual growth, focus 100% on the Bible. When you have seen traces of growth, then... You can begin to buy some Christian literature. Because as a new convert, you don't have what it takes to know the doctrines of the Bible. You don't have it yet. You'll just be absorbing whatever uh, some authors have written. And whatever they have written will contradict the word of God. And if by all means you want to read Christian literature, then go see your pastor. Go see somebody who is mature. In fact, I recommend your pastor. If your pastor is genuinely a man of God, he should be able to recommend a book and say, go and read this. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Let me say this. Any other acclaimed spiritual growth method that lacks significant input from the word of God, it can never be a reliable and genuine spiritual growth. Praise the Lord. Let me say this. I see people do all sorts of things because they want to grow. But they miss the fundamental. It's like putting the cart before the horse. I've seen people because they want to grow. They went into dry fasting. Three days, seven days, 14 days, 21 days, and whatever. And at the end of the day, they are not growing. I've seen people that great men of God in court. I've seen people that prophet, great prophet, 
I've laid hand upon them. I've seen people that so big money because they are looking for spiritual growth. I've seen people that they are anointed and catching for. I've seen people, all sorts of things because of spiritual growth. Let me say this. I've seen people pray. They pray naked. Don't do it. It's not biblical. I've seen people do all sorts of things for spiritual growth. But they miss the primary and the fundamental element. No matter how long you can you are praying, no matter how long you are fasting, if you miss this fundamental principle that we are teaching, of which salvation is number one, of which commitment to study the word of God, to be a teachable child of God, if you miss number one and number two, your spiritual growth will be doubtful. You will struggle. You will rise and fall. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So it is only the word of God. After I've seen the first Peter chapter 2, verse 2 that we read. Let's have to read that as a newborn babe, that you should seek the word of God. We should seek the word of God so that we can grow from there. But let's see something from the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 22 to 25. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 from verse 22 to 25. I read, But be ye doer of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if a man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is likened unto a man, Beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was. But in verse 25, listen to this say, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Can you see? Be the doer of the word. Don't just listen to it without doing it. Do it. What you read, put it into practice in your life. Obey it. Be committed. All Pentecostal believers, the Lord to church chapter 1 verse 8, this book of God should not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt opt out to do and meditate what is written down thereby. Thereby that you have, you have your way prosperous. Everybody loved that prosperity. But they've forgotten the requirement that say, yes, that the book must not depart from your mouth. You must study it. You must meditate and observe to do. Take care to do what is written in there. If you forget about that, then where is the success? Where is the good success? Doer of the word. That is what grows believer. The word of God is the spiritual food your body needs to grow. As we are read 1 Peter chapter 2 from 1 to 2, the Bible says, Therefore lay aside all malice, all guilt, and hypocrisy, and envy. You see now? And envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babe, desire the sincere meek of the word that ye may grow thereby. It is very, very important. <laughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. This will be the last one for that place, and then we'll look at some other things. Uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says, Study to show yourself approved of the Lord. Yes, st study to show yourself approved of the Lord. Study to show yourself thyself approved of the, unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Can you see? Study. Study to show yourself approved unto the Lord. That yes, I'm growing, sir. Lord, I'm growing. Study to show yourself approved of the Lord, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth and not ashamed. If a child of God, you must be able to, the, the, the word of God, 
is our spiritual GPS. If you don't study, you can be derailed. If you don't study, you, you find yourself making some spiritual errors. If you are not studying, you cannot grow. So my question now is this. As I wrap up this point number two, how do we now read the word of God to ensure that we are growing? How can we study the word of God to ensure that we are growing? Some people have asked, Pastor, how do I read? Can I read Genesis today, tomorrow Exodus, another day Revelation, another day Mark? It, it depends. It depends on who you are and the state of your maturity. It depends. Some people are doing Bible in one year. For those that are matured, that have been in faith for years and they, are, they have grown, it may work for them. But if you have not gotten to that, if you are still growing, I don't know. Don't, don't rush. Reading the Bible in one year is good, but it's beneficial to people that are grown because you will miss out the need. You will meet out, miss out the crucial information. When I was doing Bible in one year, several years ago, you just want to catch up. You want to catch up. I just I will come back from work. You want to catch up. At times you reform the chapters. You are just reading it. Boom, boom. And you are not assimilating. You are not taking in anything. So if you are still young in the faith, if you are not yet there spiritually, leave Bible in one year for now. Have a systematic... Now, what I want to discuss, don't let me jump the gun. I want to show us, I want to guide us how to read the Bible to grow. How to read the Bible to grow. Number one thing that you need to do before you read your Bible, anytime you want to read the Bible, because the Word of God is, is, is spirit. The Bible is a spiritual book. So, it is very important when you want to read the Bible, always pray. Always pray. That's point number one. How to study the Bible to grow. Always pray before you read the Bible. Why? The Bible is not like your mathematics. The Bible is not like your economics. The Bible is not a literature book. It is the spirit-filled book, instruction and commandment of God. Is a spiritual book. So, if you want understanding, the Bible says, Lest whosoever lacketh wisdom, let them ask of the Lord, that freely gives without any reproach, and he upbraided not. So, you want to read your Bible? The first step is pray. Ask Holy Spirit. Invite Him. Father, I want to study just four verses, ten verses, one chapter, whatever. Holy Spirit, come and teach me. Your mindset is very important. Invite the Holy Spirit to come and teach you what you are about to study. It is the Holy Spirit that gives understanding and interpretation and it will expound the Word of God. That's why the Bible says the Word of God is new every day. The passage that I read seven years ago, a verse that I read six months ago, if I read it tomorrow, the Holy Spirit can breathe the breath of life to me again and have a deeper understanding. I say, wow, I never see it this way. So the way a new convert of six months old in, in, in Christendom, the way he will see a verse will be different from the way somebody who has been a child of God for 25 years, who has matured and grown and spirit-filled and led, the earthly spirit will take us from the level of milk to solid food gradually. So it is the Holy Spirit that will teach us. So imagine the Holy Spirit. John chapter 6, verse 63. John 6, 63. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. So you see, anytime you approach the word of God 
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, this world, they are spirits. They are life. So let it be in your mind that your Bible, you have at home that you don't open, you are leaving power unopened. That word of God that you are not opening to read, you are leaving out the spirit of God. You are leaving out power, knowledge, understanding. The more you read, the more enriched you are. Praise the Lord. That's step number one. Step number one. Number two, how to read the Bible to grow. Have a specific time to study and commit to it. Let me say this. You will never have free time. No. You will never have idle time. You won't have idle time. They will say, oh, I'm free today. Today is the day I want to read all my Bible. No. You have to make the time. Be committed to it. Study it. Have hour. One hour, depending on your schedule. Not to read is not good. As you eat daily, you should also feed your spiritual man daily. Otherwise, the spiritual man will not grow. So, have a specific time. Number three, because of my time. Number three, take notes while studying and strive to memorize. Try, strive to memorize some key verses. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. Take notes. Take notes. It's very important. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Acts 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with readiness of mind. And such the scripture daily, whether those things were so. These were the Berean Christians. Take notes. Because when the, as I'm teaching now, you think that, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, pastor, you are right. It will appear that, oh, I have everything up here. Next week, Tuesday, if I ask you, where, which passage did I preach from? You won't remember. You will not. But the novel that you read, when you are in the world, the novel that you read in primary six from one, you will remember the name. Because those ones are not spirits books. The books, the days I used to read the novels in those days, I still remember their name, the author, the actor. When I was still reading uh, James Hadley Chase in those days, I still remember the title in my head now. If you ask me, knock, 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 who is there? Pock to hollow. I remember all those. In those days of James Hadley Chase, it was a competition at home. Between me and my brothers, we want to read as fast as possible. We go buy it. Ten cobble. I still remember the names. Paul in the bottle. All those things we still remember. I still remember them. But the word of God is a spirit. It's so volatile. Except you train yourself. You train yourself. You train yourself. You train yourself. You read it again. Take notes. I'm going to finish this today so that we don't come back to it but point number three we'll start from next week pray, praise the lord so take notes and try to memorize the key notes number four have a suitable bible a suitable bible to enrich your understanding have a suitable bible uh, i like king james but i have other types of bible in other versions and there are some that are freely available online. So, have a suitable Bible. If you use a Bible that doesn't help your understanding, you will not grow. You will not. So, if you can afford a study Bible, better. Study Bible will help, but they, are, they can be pricey. But if you have a website where you can shop, you, you monitor them. When they do sales, then you can buy so I recommend study Bible, New King James Version. I have it too. I have the Old King James, which is the one I always love to preach. But I also have the New King James Version. I have other versions too. 
that I read. Because when I read here, I might not get the main message. I might need amplified version. I might need the message. I might need modern day English to help me have a suitable Bible. To be a child of God and to grow spiritual, to, to grow spiritually, you need to do some investment. Investment of your time, investment of money to buy the right type of Bible. That one is very important. Number four, uh, number five, avoid distractions. Avoid distractions when you are reading. I see a lot of people when they are reading, their TV is on, their phone, they take it, they are reading, they are texting, they are reading, they are texting, they are reading, ping, WhatsApp comes in. <laughs> they spend about 15, 20 minutes on that, what they are reading here. Remember, anytime you open the word of God, the word of God, the Bible says in the beginning, there was word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Anytime you open your Bible, you are in the presence of God. So you are saying, God, wait. Let me laugh. I saw this joke they sent on my WhatsApp. And you are looking at it. And yet you are studying. So choose one. Except that call is urgent. Except it's an emergency. Put your phone in silence. Block it. 30 minutes. Read. Because when you are reading, it flows. You get the flow of what you are reading. By the time you are distracted, you come back again. It's like you putting a pot of water on the stove. And when it's about to boil, you turn up the water. You start all over again. So, mommy's at home. The time to study your Bible is not when you are cooking. Because you get up several times to go check the stew, to go check the food. That's not the time. And when you are coming the night, when you take your shower, when you're about to sleep, that's not the time to read the Bible either. You will sleep off, except you discipline yourself. So find a convenient time for you, depending on who you are. You can eat your dinner, sleep, and wake up 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., and study your Bible between 5 and 5.30, do your morning devotion, and grab it and take something out of it. Look for the rema. Look for something new. That you meditate on something to grab on and minister on uh, and let it minister to you number six number six meditate on what you have read and focus more on any particular word phrase verse from the bible yes meditate on a particular when you read any particular passage of the bible and something appears to be new to you or caught your attention, grab it, grab it, hold it forth onto that word of life, hold forth onto it. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. What the Bible says, the Bible says, For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even unto dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is the designer. Of the thoughts and intent of the earth. Praise the Lord. When you read this verse, the word of God, here the writer gives some words to qualify it. It's quick, it's powerful, it's sharp, even sharper than two edged sword. Wow. Here he said, the word of God is the divider to separate of soul and spirit. That one alone, you can meditate on that word. Say, the word of God. It divides asunder. That is, it separates the soul from the spirit and of the joint on the marrow. How? If you meditate on that, if you, depending on the type of Bible you have, if you look at that column in my own reference Bible here, it tells me if I want to see more relevant information, I should go to Psalm 147 verse 15. I should go to Isaiah 49 2. I should go to Ephesians 6 7. As you go to 1 Corinthians 4 24, this is how you meditate. You look at the references to a particular verse that ministers to you. Wow! The word of God. Quick, powerful, sharp, sharper than two edged sword. The word of God, it also divides soul from the spirit. What does it mean? Those Bible passages explain it. Meditate on them. And it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. Then, 
Finally, after you have read any verse of the Bible, ask yourself some questions and see how you can apply the word of God. How you can apply the word of God to your life. Any passage that you have read, ask yourself some questions. John chapter 5 verse 39. This is the last passage for today. Sorry, I'm running for a little bit uh, behind. John 5 39. John 5 39. It says, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and it is they which testify of me. Ask yourself these questions as we wrap up today's Bible studies. Do I really understand what I've read? Ask yourself, do I really understand what I've read? If not, if you don't understand, where can you get help? Do you have notes? Do you have other Bible type that can help you? Do you have somebody that can shed more light to it? Ask yourself that question. Number two, what is the focus or the theme of the chapter you have read? Every Bible chapter has a focus, has a theme. It can be on righteousness. It can be on love. It can be on happiness. It can be on spiritual gifts. It can be about rapture. It can be a... It, there is always a theme. The focus of that chapter. That's why when you want to read your Bible, the beginning, the introduction, depending on what type of Bible you have. Let me show you why. What type of Bible you have. The beginning passage. Don't skip it. Read it. It will prepare your mind. What are you going to meet in the chapter? It will tell you. My Bible, you can see here, this passage tells me what I'm going to expect in Matthew. I read this. So this is the theme, the focus. It tells me what I'm going to meet there. Read it so that you have an understanding. Who is the author? Why was this book written? To whom? Where? And so many other things. So there must be a theme. Understand the theme. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself, is there anything? Is there any blessing for me to claim from this passage? If there's any promise or blessing, claim it. Ask yourself, is there any warning to me personally that I must heed? Ask yourself, heed that warning. Ask yourself, how do I apply this passage to my life and to my situation? Ask yourself that question and ask yourself finally, is there any commandment that I must obey? This is how to study the Bible. If you follow this, the list is endless, but I just gave this crucial ones. Ask yourself these pertinent questions. And if you do this, if you do this, maybe three times a week, and ask yourself these serious questions, and you take note, this is what I've learned. This is what I commit to. These are the commandments. If you do this consistently, one year, and you keep this in mind, you will see growth, spiritual growth in your life. And it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. Beloved, our time will not permit us. I'm sorry. I thought we were able to take uh, three points. But I don't want to rush this. Next week, Tuesday, by the grace of God, we are going to go to number three prerequisite. But remember what you have done today. Salvation is key. You cannot skip it. Number two, commitment to study the word of God. To study, obey, and meditate. Commitment to study. Commitment to obey. Commitment to meditate. They are crucial to your spiritual growth. And it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this evening, Lord, for the little we are able to do. Thank you, Lord, for the grace you've given unto us, Lord, to learn these secrets to spiritual growth. I pray, Lord, for everyone listening to me this evening, Lord. Lord, help them to be the doer of these fundamental principles and the doer of your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, Sunday service is 10 a.m. Please join us on Sunday uh, by 10 a.m. And also invite your friends and family uh, to be part of this blessing. And it shall be well with you as you do that in Jesus' name. It's time for us to bring our offering before the Lord this evening. We want to thank God for the love of everyone that has been supporting the church during this uh, pandemic period. May the Lord bless you mightily and prosper the work of your hands in the name of Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. If you are new to the, to the church, please go to our website, www.christsupreme.ca. To the top right-hand corner, you will see Donate. Please click on it and fill out the form. Your offering will go to us. And if you are sending it by email money transfer, please continue to do it. Yeah, by now, it should be on the screen. Send it to rotfak at yahoo.com. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Giving to God is part of the evidence or the fruit of spiritual growth. If you are growing, you will know that your money, your life, your gold, silver, belong unto the Lord. So there's nothing in money. God gave us money to worship him. And shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to bring this little token unto you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with a job. We thank you, Lord, for our businesses too. For those, Lord, that have no job and I want to be part of this blessing. I pray, Holy Spirit, divine Lord, bless them indeed, Father, in the name of Jesus. For your children, Lord, that have been faithful throughout this uh, pandemic period, Lord, Father, Lord, surprise them. Lord, enlighten them on all sides, Father, and let the name of the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this message. We invite you to visit us at www.christsupreme.ca for more spirit-filled messages and for more information about the church. You can also call us at 647-884-8494. God bless you.